Nepal achieves a major success. Rubella eliminated as a public health issue. WHO confirms. Confirmation of brain-eating amoeba in Kerala. Nigleria fowleri, commonly known as brain-eating amoeba, affects the brain. Increase in saltwater crocodile population in Sundarbans. Signs of ecosystem change reported. West Bengal State Forest Department released a report. Launch of Adi Karma Yogi Abhiyan, a new initiative by the Ministry of Tribal Affairs. This campaign will strengthen tribal communities. Successful test of Agni-5 ballistic missile, a nuclear-capable intercontinental ballistic missile, tested at Chandipur in Odisha. There has been an increase in the number of saltwater crocodiles in the Sundarbans Biosphere Reserve compared to the previous year. This was revealed in the Crocodile Population Survey conducted by the West Bengal Forest Department. Talking about saltwater crocodile, it is the largest and heaviest of all living reptiles in the world. Its scientific name is Crocodilus porosus. It is native to saltwater habitats and saline wetlands from the eastern coast of India to Southeast Asia, the Sunda region and Northern Australia. Notably, the average length of a male crocodile is 5 meters and its weight is approximately 500 kilograms. The average length of a female saltwater crocodile is just under 3 meters and its weight is less than 100 kilograms. It is classified as least concern on the IUCN red list. As for the Sundarbans Biosphere Reserve, it was established by the Government of India in 1989. It was recognized under UNESCO's Man and Biosphere Programme in November 2001. This biosphere reserve has a rich diversity of aquatic and terrestrial flora and fauna. The highly productive ecosystem of the Sundarbans functions as a natural fishing hub. Recently, changes are occurring in the river system of Assam's Dibrusaikova National Park. The cause of this is two indigenous plant species, Bombax seba and Lagerstromia speciosa. This was revealed in a study published in the journal Earth. It is important to note that Bombax seba and Lagerstromia speciosa are plant species that mainly invade grasslands. Bombax seba and Lagerstromia speciosa are native flowering trees of Assam. These plant species are reshaping the river ecosystem of Dibrusaikova National Park in eastern Assam. Speaking of Dibrusaikova National Park, it is not only a national park but also a biosphere reserve. It is located on the southern bank of the Brahmaputra River in Assam. It is notable that Dibrusaikova National Park has semi evergreen forests, deciduous forests, coastal and marshy forests and moist evergreen forests. It is the largest marshland forest in Northeast India. Additionally, it is an important bird area notified by BirdLife International. This national park is most famous for the rare white-winged ducks and wild horses. India has successfully test-fired its medium-range ballistic missile Agni-5 from the integrated test range at Chandipur, Odisha. Agni-5 is a nuclear-capable, land-based, intercontinental ballistic missile developed by the Defence Research and Development Organisation. This missile comes with multiple independently targetable re-entry vehicle capability, meaning it can carry and launch three nuclear warheads simultaneously. This missile is capable of hitting targets over a distance of more than 5,000 km. It uses advanced navigation, guidance, warhead and engine technologies. It is one of India's most advanced long-range missiles and plays a crucial role in strengthening military security. For information, a ballistic missile is a rocket-powered, self-guided tactical weapon that follows a ballistic trajectory to deliver a payload from its launch site to a predetermined target. This missile can carry nuclear, chemical or biological weapons. It can be launched from various platforms such as ground-based silos, mobile platforms, aircraft, ships and submarines.
Recently, the World Health Organization announced that Nepal has eliminated rubella as a public health problem. Rubella is a highly contagious viral infection recognized by its distinctive red rashes. It is also known as German measles or three-day measles. While measles and rubella are two different diseases, they share some similar symptoms such as red rashes. Rubella is caused by the rubella virus which is different from measles and is not as contagious. The rubella virus spreads from one person to another when someone coughs or sneezes. It can also be transmitted from a pregnant woman to her fetus and you can be infected even without showing symptoms. In most cases, the infection is mild or sometimes asymptomatic. The main symptom is spotted rashes, which usually start on the face or behind the ears and spread to the neck and body. It is important to note that this infection can be particularly dangerous for pregnant women as there is a 90% chance of the virus spreading to the fetus if the woman is infected during pregnancy. This can result in fetal death or cognitive rubella syndrome. The measles, mumps, rubella vaccine is a safe and effective measure to protect against rubella. Recently, the US President announced a $175 billion Golden Dome Missile Defense Shield for the United States. The Golden Dome is an advanced defense system designed to protect the United States from missile threats. Its primary objective is to detect incoming missiles, track them and destroy them. It will utilize a vast network of satellites to track missiles at every stage of their trajectory. This system will employ space-based radar and sensors to detect missiles in real time. Its goal is to destroy missiles mid-flight using laser technology. The components of the Golden Dome will be drawn from America's existing missile defense systems, which include Patriot missile batteries, terminal high-altitude area defense, Aegis Ballistic and Missile Defense and others. A 9-year-old girl in the Kozikot district of Kerala has died due to a brain infection caused by primary amoebic meningoencephalitis. This brain infection was caused by Nigeria Fowleri. It is noteworthy that Nigeria Fowleri is commonly known as the brain-eating amoeba. It is important to mention that Nigeria fowleri is a free-living amoeba found in freshwater and soil. It enters the nose through breathing. According to the Centers for Disease Control and Prevention, there are two main risk factors for the brain-eating amoeba. Exposure to freshwater or fumes. After entering the nose, the amoeba travels to the brain via the olfactory nerve. It destroys the brain's tissues and causes swelling. Symptoms of the brain-eating amoeba mainly appear within 2 to 15 days. Its major symptoms include fever, headache, vomiting, hallucinations, confusion, seizures and changes in smell or taste. According to the CDC, patients typically die within 5 days of symptom onset. A report states that global mortality rate for primary amoebic meningoencephalitis is approximately 97%. It is noteworthy that in India, the first case of brain-eating amoeba was reported in 1971. Recently, the UNHCR has temporarily halted the repatriation of Sri Lankan Tamil refugees who were allegedly arrested upon arriving in Sri Lanka. It is worth mentioning that UNHCR, which stands for the United Nations High Commissioner for Refugees, is a special refugee agency of the United Nations. Its purpose is to provide protection and assistance to refugees, forcibly displaced communities and stateless people. It was established in 1950 by the United Nations General Assembly following the Second World War to assist the millions of Europeans who had fled their homes during the war. Its objective is to protect the rights of refugees. The agency coordinates efforts for voluntary repatriation, local integration and resettlement of refugees. This international refugee law operates specifically according to the principles of the 1951 Refugee Convention and its 1967 Protocol. Under these principles, refugees are provided with protection to shield them from expulsion or persecution from their country. When refugees are sent back to their countries of origin, it is ensured that they are returned in a safe and voluntary manner. 
Recently, the Ministry of Tribal Affairs officially launched the Adi Karma Yogi Abhiyan. It is noteworthy that this campaign has been envisioned as the world's largest grassroots level tribal leadership program. The campaign emphasizes service, resolve, and dedication. This initiative is an important part of the Janjatiya Gaurav Varsh. It is a nationwide training and motivation program. Under this campaign, a solution-oriented strategy will be developed. It is important to note that the Adi Karma Yogi Abhiyan is a national mission for responsible governance. This campaign is designed to create a cadre of 2 million tribal grassroots workers and village-level change leaders. They will promote inclusive development and strengthen service delivery in tribal areas. The aim of this campaign is to promote accountable, people-centric governance at the village and community level. Additionally, multi-departmental governance laboratory workshops will be held from the state to the district, block and village levels. Under this campaign, a network of 2 million change-making leaders will be created across 550 districts to implement grassroots development initiatives. That's all for now in this bulletin. After the news, let's take a quick look at 5 questions related to the bulletin. Question 1. Consider the following statements regarding the Sundarbans Biosphere Reserve. 1. It was established by the Government of India in 1989. 2. It is recognized under UNESCO's Man and Biosphere Program. 3. It is a mosaic of tidal mangrove forests and islands of various sizes and shapes. How many of the above statements are correct? A. Only 1 B. Only 2 C. All 3 D. None of these Question 2. Consider the following statements regarding the Agni-5 missile. 1. It is a nuclear-capable intercontinental ballistic missile developed by DRDO. 2. This missile has the capability of multiple independently targetable re-entry vehicles. 3. This missile is capable of travelling up to a distance of 3000 km. How many of the above statements are correct? A. Only 1 B. Only 2 C. All 3 D. None of these Question 3. Consider the following statements regarding rubella. 1. It is a highly contagious viral infection. 2. Its virus spreads through coughing and sneezing. 3. The rubella virus cannot spread from a pregnant woman to the fetus. How many of the above statements are incorrect? A. Only 1 B. Only 2 C. All 3 D. None of these Question 4. Consider the following statements regarding Golden Dome. 1. It is an advanced missile defense system designed to protect America from missile threats. 2. This system will only use Patriot missile batteries. 3. A vast network of satellites will be used to track missiles. How many of the above statements are incorrect? A. Only 1 B. Only 2 C. All 3 D. None of these Question 5. Consider the following statements regarding the United Nations High Commissioner for Refugees. 1. It was established by the United Nations General Assembly in 1967 after World War II. 2. Its purpose is to provide protection and assistance to refugees, forcibly displaced communities and stateless people. 3. It coordinates efforts for voluntary repatriation, local integration and resettlement. How many of the above statements are correct? A. Only 1 B. Only 2 C. All 3 D. None of these Please provide your answers in the comment section. Let's take a look at some small yet important news. Recently, the Arunachal Pradesh State Pollution Control Board organized a public hearing for environmental approval of the proposed Kalai 2 hydroelectric project in Anjor district. This project is being developed by the THDC India Limited. It is a 1200 megawatt hydroelectric project on the Lohit River in Arunachal Pradesh's Anjor district. The Lohit River is a tributary of the Brahmaputra River. This is a river flow project that also includes a reservoir. Under this project, a gravity dam will be constructed. 
Recently, Manika Vishwakarma from Rajasthan won the title of Miss Universe India 2025 during an event held in Jaipur. Prior to this, she was also crowned Miss Universe Rajasthan 2024. Manika is a trained classical dancer and painter whose art has been recognized by the Lalit Kala Academy and the JJ School of Arts. Additionally, she represented India under the Ministry of External Affairs at BIMSTEC SIVOCON. Now, she will represent India at the 74th Miss Universe competition, which will be held in Thailand in November 2025. Due to the heavy rainfall in Mumbai recently, one of the major sources of drinking water for the metropolis, the Vihar Lake, has overflowed. It is a man-made reservoir located near Vihar village in the Borivali National Park area of northern Mumbai on the Mithi River. This lake was constructed by the British government between 1856 and 1860 to address the drinking water problems of southern Mumbai residents. The lake receives water from the Pavari Kanhari mountain ranges. It is Mumbai's largest lake located in the Salset Islands. Recently, the Indian Navy ships INS Rana and INS Jyoti participated in joint naval exercise SLINEX 25. This joint exercise was held in Colombo. INS Rana is a guided missile destroyer while INS Jyoti is a fleet tanker. The exercise took place in two phases. The first phase began with the harbour phase in Colombo, which lasted from 14th to 16th August 2025, while the second phase, the sea phase, took place from 17th to 18th August, which included the special forces of both navies. Recently, the Parliament passed the Mines and Minerals Development and Regulation Amendment Bill 2025. Its aim is to make mining sustainable and achieve the goals of the National Critical Minerals Mission. Under the bill, leaseholders can apply to the state government to add new minerals to their mining lease without additional fees. These include critical minerals such as lithium, graphite, nickel, cobalt, gold and silver. Additionally, the scope of the National Mineral Exploration Trust has been expanded and it has been renamed the National Mineral Exploration and Development Trust. Recently, the Tamil Nadu Forest Department announced the establishment of the Marine Elite Force under the Chennai Wildlife Division. A budget of 96 lakh has been allocated for this force. The force will focus on the protection of olive ridley turtles and reducing threats in the coastal areas, especially between Nilankarai and Marina. This force will patrol and enforce laws against illegal fishing, wildlife crimes and rescue marine animals. It is expected to reduce turtle mortality, control poaching and improve data collection. For more informative content, like, share and subscribe and do not forget to press the bell icon to get the notifications.